two. This podcast is brought to you by Galveston Express, your link between Galveston and the Houston airports. For more information and how to book a ride, please visit galvestonexpress.com. Also brought to you by Undercurrent Athletics and Hard Knocks Gym, both located at the corner of 52nd Street and Broadway. For advertising info and inquiries, please contact Galveston Island Podcast at gmail.com. All right, everybody. So, uh, we're first going to talk about some uh, closures this weekend on 45. Um, expect the traffic to be slow coming to and from the island. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the closures are going to be at. Uh, anyway, uh, weather for the day. It was actually a really pretty day, right, Ben? It was. I was out golfing, and it uh, it wasn't too hot, and there was a nice breeze, so it was actually quite nice. How'd you do out there? Do I uh, did about average. Did about average, but I'll tell you one thing, and this might be a subject for another time. There's really not that many choices of golf courses around here. What? Uh, which one did Island. you go to? I went to Bayou Country Club. It was up in Texas City. Honestly, it's not that far away from my house. Is that the one you went two weeks ago? Yeah. Well, it's just it's good deals up there, man. It's like it cost me like eighteen bucks a player to uh, to wow. play today, and I mean the, the course is pretty nice. When was I mean, your tea time? Already, 12 o'clock. That's the thing. That's why it's 18 bucks is because it's the middle of the tea time and you booked online. So um, that's why it's cheap. That being said, I like Moody Gardens better than that one, but Moody's a little bit more expensive. What's Moody uh, cost a player? Dude, I can't say off the top of my head. Last time I know I paid $30. That was the same deal. It was a weekday, middle of the day online booking, but that was like... A really good rate for Moody. I think that it hovers around like forty-five to fifty dollars normally around Moody. And there's that country club out there, but obviously you can't get on it unless you're a member. I wish I was a member. That would be very nice. Um, but what you get into uh, this week, Alex? What's going on in Galveston? Huh? <clears throat> so uh, this week, actually, last weekend, I, I went uh, fishing. Uh, with a couple of buddies of mine, and they they participated in this Beach Masters tournament that the uh, Lighthouse Charity <coughs> was uh, uh, putting on. And people who don't know the Lighthouse Charity, um, they're one of the bigger bigger charities on the uh, on the island. Uh, their their main office and headquarters are right off of uh, 45 coming down. They uh, they kind of help with nonprofits. Um, Actually, they are a big nonprofit. They they help uh, less fortunate uh, medical patients, accident victims, and then uh, they also during the storms they provide uh, emergency disaster response and uh, assistance. Where are uh, they located on the island? Yeah, they're located on the island. They're one of the biggest. Um, what is it? They um, they're one of the biggest um, charities on the island. Um, I think they are the biggest charity on the island. Um, but they they do a whole lot of stuff up and down the coast. Um, let's see. I've Here heard I've heard of them before, but I just didn't realize they were the ones who did that. Yeah, I think. Uh, um, Dick Dogard is is the president, and his wife is Hori Seen. Uh, if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. Um, they uh, they started it, or they're the president of it now. Uh, they funded it with uh, over the with over a million dollars from the credit union, bank loans, retirement account, as they believe in helping others, and they've kind of grown. This uh, this tournament, this particular tournament that they did, this is the 10th one they've done. Um, the buddy of mine who actually fished in it uh, got second place in the Redfish uh, division. His name is Jordan Trout, and he came right at 44 inches, and the one above him got 45 and a half. Those are big redfish. They are. This thing was monstrous. Hey, Alex, that operation center is over there in 69th and Broadway. I know I've, I know I remember that because I've seen this warehouse. They got that big warehouse. Yeah, it's warehouse. a big red warehouse. It's really nice. I don't like that. Is this the, uh, is this the term that you were, t- we were talking to that guy about and he said they tagged fish and they had trucks and stuff and giveaways? No, that's the CCA tournament. Oh, that's a bigger one. Than the C, all. yeah, you know, if you you know what the CCA tournament is. Yeah, yeah, I know what the CCA is. I think, I is that just the Texas thing, or is it a kind of nationwide thing? 
Coastal Con- I think it's I nationwide, but I think that I think they, they have a Texas. Yeah, they have yeah. a Texas Star one, where uh, I think the first ten winners. Um, I think they have like thirty tag fit redfish, and then I could be wrong, but I know ten. The first ten winners receive like a brand new F one fifty with a truck, a trailer, and a boat. That's insane. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's insane. like twenty five bucks for a year. You can get like a thousand dollars for a year membership for a you know, for a you know lifetime membership, um, and it just has a whole bunch of cool perks and stuff. So, are those redfish they tag? They tag them all around along the coast of Texas. Um, yeah, or but uh, I, th- I think I think they only release them in a, in a few places, um, like the hot spots where everybody's fishing. Yeah, like Galveston Bay. I know Galveston Bay. They released a few. Um, but if you let's say you catch one of these and you're not signed up for the tournament, uh, and then you bring it in, you're like, oh, okay, I want to, you know, bring in the fish, uh, and then you sign up, or it, you have to pass a lie detector test. And if you don't pass the lie detector test, you try scheming them. It's like a, I think it's considered a, a federal crime. So listen, I'm looking at these prizes right now. Pretty insane. These right? things are ridiculous. Okay, so. The tag redfish division, you can get an F-150 along with a boat and a trailer. Yep. They're giving away $25,000 scholarships, 2017 Mercury boats, flat bottoms. This is this is insane. This is obviously a big tournament. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah. So how much is the uh, entry, and how long do you know how long it? Look at goes look for? up CCA Star. I'm on their webpage right now. Look at entry. I think it's twenty five bucks for a year, or just for the, like the tournament entry, it's twenty twenty five bucks. Let me find out here, because looking at these prizes, I might have to sign up for this, man. Yeah, there was a, they actually have they posted the the Beach Masters tournament. They posted the winner list online. Are you uh, signed up for this? No, but I'm, I'm I'm planning on doing it when I go out on on a um, my buddy uh, my buddy's boat. Well, wait, when does that happen? Then? Probably this next week when the weather clears up. What kind of boat's he got? Um, it's like a little skiff. Oh, something for the bay? Something for the bay. Three people. Fish comfortably on. Four people got to fight for space. Do you, um, you guys fish off the boat or you just use the boat to get to where you're getting, going and jump off? Fish off the boat. Some people... Um, that I know of, they'll they'll get like those power poles or they'll anchor the boat and then they'll they'll wade yeah. Galveston Bay because it's so so shallow. Yeah, that's that's what I was. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys out there doing it. Yeah, those are, those guys are serious waders though. I I I don't like wading in the bay. I only like wading out in the surf. It sounds kind of weird. I'd rather be in a kayak or a boat. So when you get out in the bay and get out of your boat, um, when you do that, do you wear waders or? Do you wear some sort of foot protection out there and just shorts? Um, it's you're supposed to wear. Uh, you're supposed to wear surf boots, mm-hmm. which which kind of it, it, in the winter time some people wear waders and it. I wear waders in the winter because sometimes it gets a little chilly out. Yeah, there. I, I I'm kind of crazy. I don't wear waders even when it's freezing cold. I'll just deal with it. Why? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. The but, waders uh, do get annoying sometimes. Do what? The waders do get annoying sometimes. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's just it's just they just feel weird, and like you start sweating in them, and it's just it just feels like kind of gross. How much is a good pair of surf boots out there? I got mine for like forty, fifty bucks. Well, you go to Academy and get it. Yeah, you order online. Mm-hmm. Academy. Uh, my surf boots, I really like. Uh, I've had them for a long time. The zipper stopped working on it. And I had to do some repair, and I just kind of slip them on, slip them off. I only really go wear them when I'm going around rocks. Because I'll shuffle my feet, and that's really good stingray defense. I was about to say, they got stingrays out there, don't they? You got to worry about? <clears throat> yeah, but they only really run heavy one time of the year. You just got to you gotta worry about them. But otherwise, you know. You should be all right. You should be all right. So the winner of the shark division of this tournament caught a 120-inch tiger shark. Where was that at? I don't know. I kind of want to look. Where was he at? Oh, yeah, Corpus. Do what? Do, do they release it? Yeah. So, um, so how do they prove it? They take pictures, and then you have to have a picture with the wristband that uh-huh. they have. Uh huh. Um, so, with this guy, um, 
and the, the cool thing about this one is like so you have to you have to do a check-in um, at the uh, at this one they usually do it at the Galveston Yacht Basin mm -hmm. but this year they had it at Jamaica Beach so you had to go check in and and then you could go out back and fish so he probably had team members out there or he drove all the way back or something I don't I it's some some of these guys you know they'll go back they'll drive all all night go back to where they know that they're, they're going to catch big sharks fish it take their pictures and then drive back and then just kind of you know hope and pray that no one catches a 121 inch bullshit you know, tiger shark out there so where is there is, is that where the good shark fishing is out there in jamaica beach yeah down uh, on the west side yeah we me and my buddy john michael and um jordan trout uh john michael camel we went out to um uh, the san louis pass and that's where we ended up being but the wind persisted throughout the night and we only caught that one uh that one big uh, redfish that Jordan got second place with. I've heard that San Luis Pass is where the sharks are. I've heard multiple we've, people down there. We've caught we've fishing. caught eight foot. The biggest one we caught out of there was like a like a, almost an eight foot bull shark. Mm -hmm. And then they caught a uh, um, a seven or eight foot lemon shark. Um, what do you what at do you this bait the sharks with? Um, they use. Um, I actually caught the the Jack uh, Ravel that they uh, that we chopped up and and put it out there. So we we use Jack baits and and sometimes we use um, stingrays and they really like those. Oh really? Yeah. So you go out and you fish for the bait and then you use that bait. Yep. It's fresh. Yeah, it's, it's really sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, but you gotta stay out there all day, huh? All day and all night. The thing is, you gotta have you gotta have your rod. It's a it's a beer drinking sport. Mm -hmm. You kind of you gotta go out there, wait a little bit, but the uh, you catching your bait, <clears throat> trying to catch a jackfish, and you kind of have to keep walking out there with your surf rods and and cast it and trying to trying to get some bigger fish to put on your shark rods. But in the meantime, you know you could you could you know trout fish in the morning and the, in the evening and you know fish for reds. Suddenly you gotta load up your cooler, get your speaker, get your sunscreen, make it a day thing. No, it's like a, it's like a two day thing. Uh, People camp out there. Yeah, my uh, buddy John Michael actually has a tent cot. Oh really? Do you know what a tent cot is? Yeah. So he can just go out there, drive out there, and stay yeah, and you can walks. get a good tent cot for like a hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are those will keep the mosquitoes off you and and. You know, I'm, I'm I'm looking at them right now. They're only there's there's Cabela's one that's like you know a double tent cot for like four hundred bucks, but I'm not sure if he spent that much on a tent cot. But we I went out with him to um, uh, to Padre Island National Seashore, and it was actually really nice. We stayed out there for three day, three days, and how far away is that from Galveston? Uh, that's all the way in Corpus Christi, so. I think like six hours away but we like to night drive worth it yep we caught a big eight foot bull shark but the whole week before that they were catching like 12 and 14 foot um tiger sharks and hammer hammerheads oh wow i didn't know that there were big hammerheads out there it's huge hammerheads did, wait, did you catch any hammerheads no we it, it, the wind and the and the surf were pers too persistent for us to keep doing anything Really? When yeah. was that? <clears throat> that was actually last year, like to the date last year. Very cool. How long do these uh, tournaments last for? Are they like month long tournaments or something? No, just the week, the weekend. Um, this this Beach Masters was only this weekend. Oh yeah. Um, the CCA, I think it's three months long. Oh wow. What about um, Father's Day's coming up this weekend? What are you doing for uh, for for old pops for you? I just ordered him a bunch of golf balls today. Because that's like my, st that's my standard gift for my dad. So he can um, waste them. Do you order him the nice ones or just ones that he can just? No, just man. Waste? I or I ordered him, him some, um, <clears throat> some refurbished balls. You know what that is? No. It's just like balls that have been hit and people have recovered them and cleaned them up and like they grade them. It'll be like AA, AAA, Quad A, and that's like how quality they are. So I ordered him some 4A Callaway balls, which is like 
just found in lakes and stuff that are still in pristine condition. Because he's just going to hit them in the lakes too. So I'm not going to buy them. <laughs> I'm not going to buy him any Pro V ones or anything because those things are way too expensive. Um, but you know he's back in North Carolina, so I'm not going to go back and take him out to dinner or anything. He's just going to have to be okay without me. But it should, looks like good weather on the island. I'm sure there'll be a bunch of festivities. Obviously, there are a lot of people here. You saw the traffic out there today. Yeah, it's well, it's getting to be the 4th of July weekend up in about two weeks. So, What's going on um, in Galveston 4th of July? There are fireworks, aren't there? Yeah, there's fireworks. Um, I'm definitely going to be out there. We might have to do a mobile podcast pretty soon. Um, but for anyone wondering what, what we're going to do next and everything, uh, I, my I reached out to my personal friend uh, and owner of uh, Maceo Spice and Import, uh, Concetta Maceo, and she is interested in doing a podcast. So we're probably going to go over to the spice shop and do like a do like a piece over there. Maybe maybe do a pod- podcast over there. Not really sure how it's going to work out, but we're going to take pictures and probably have her up here in the in the studio and talking and. And That's all well and good, but we're going to have to work out some free BOI sandwiches and maybe a beer or two. Maybe a beer, yes. I think the, that her BOI be. sandwiches are just... Oh, they're, they're freaking good. Those are... Why are they so good? I don't know. I don't even know what's in them. I just... I just smell it and I eat it. I don't even take time to realize what I'm eating. So, um... We also have another guest. It's my, my coach and the owner of Undercurrent Athletics on 52nd. He, um, his name is Joe Waldrop and he wants to do a podcast with us with, in, in congruence with his podcast called, um, Two Morons Discuss Everything. What an amazing name for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who does he do it with? Um, a buddy of mine named Jeremiah. Yeah, uh, he lives in Lyon. Mm-hmm. Was he trained over there with you guys? He's a he's a sheriff's uh, deputy. Oh, okay. Very cool. He had a uh, he had kidney stones, so he had to be you know use the um, FMLA act, so he can you know oh, be out family medical leave. Kind of jack jacked himself up real good. And that would not be fun. I no, it stones. wouldn't. Not pass him at least. You know, I've heard you know this might be an old wives' tale. But if you drink like a full glass of fresh squeezed lemon juice, it'll break that thing up. A full glass of lemon juice. Well, because well, just good look. luck getting that down too. <clears throat> Actually, I like lemon juice a lot. Like straight lemon, straight juice. lemon juice. Wow. You but anyway, so what you're supposed to do is you drink it, and so the the kidney stone is calcium, right? Mm-hmm. Pure calcium. So what that pure calcium is, it, it gets broken down by the citric acid, you know flush come growing through your kidneys and it breaks it down. I don't know if I believe you on this one. I might have to do my own research. Do your own research and let's get back to it. But I'm looking at right now what's going on on the through July fourth weekend. July second, there's a free movie night on the strand. Um it's gonna What be movie sure. are they playing? It's, so this is odd. They're showing a Christmas story. What? But it's July it's July. So I don't know what's up with that, you know. Obviously, it's who's hosting strong. before I before I step before I step um, on toes out here? Who is hosting it? Yeah, I don't. Would it be on the side of Yaga's? I'm thinking. I would. Sanger Fest Park, corner of Twenty Third and Strand Street. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're right. Oh, it's beside no. Yaga's. Um, what is? It? I don't understand. What their movie selection? Christmas. I mean, I don't really understand that either. Do you like the Griswolds go to you know vacation or something? Or something I mean? island themed. Yeah, I think it would be a like, little bit more appropriate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or like you know what's that movie with uh, Tom Hanks, Wilson, Castaway? Castaway. <laughs> yes. That'd That's what good. they need to That'd show. Be a great movie. Castaway in Galveston. Something on a something on an island. Oh my gosh! Well, they also obviously have um, fireworks. They're gonna have twenty minutes worth of fireworks starting at nine fifteen on July fourth. Last year it was bad. And what the fireworks? No, after the fireworks, getting home. So we mm. were. I was with with uh, my coach Joe, 
and there was not a, I mean around us there was no problems but like several people got stabbed stabbed was just getting wild out there yeah several mm-hmm. people got stabbed it was just kind of nuts I bet the traffic's terrible too huh? oh it is that's why I always I'm I think gonna, I have to bike out I'm there gonna, dude I'm gonna take it take a take a bike out there with Abby maybe at Logan and Patricia could come along too what do you what are your plans for fourth of July? Uh, I mean I don't know probably to go watch those fireworks or something they said there's uh, Moody Gardens is having bands on the sand Friday and Saturday that, now that's fun that's always fun what is that in there like a wave pool beach area I think so yeah so you gotta pay for entrance but it's always pretty cool yeah it doesn't say how much it is oh dude you know what I, you know what starts tomorrow what I think that Da Vinci um, oh at Moody Gardens yeah, that's that gonna be something we're checking out and you know what they put Mona Lisa on that billboard, so I'm wondering if the Mona Lisa is not in the Louvre anymore and they're traveling with it. I'm going to figure that out right now. I think they said they had 23 original pieces of his art and like something like 17... Uh, inventions. Inventions. Um, so I think it opens tomorrow. It's only like 18 bucks a person. I'm going to have to go see it. Oh, it, excuse me. 27th. Oh, on the 27th. Oh, okay. So two weeks from now. Ten days. Oh, this is cool. I haven't been to like a specific exhibit over there in Moody Gardens yet. Are I'm guessing two? it's in one of the pyramids, right? Yeah, I think so. T- two weeks ago, I went to uh, the Houston Museum of Natural Science. How was that? That was pretty cool. They, uh, they, they redid their mummy exhibit. Oh, really? And they have this one guy with like a little beard. And hair, dude, it's weird. It's kind of creepy to like see these. They're actual people that were like, you know, mummified. Could you imagine like what, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, you know, or 2,000 years ago, you're like, oh, you know, they're just going to stick me in a hole. They'll never find me again. And then all of a sudden you're, you're on display for, you know, a you know, 20 something year old, or like a four year old kid saying, mommy, look at that. And, you know, you're just sitting there like, well, they don't know it. Sure, their body is, but they're not there. No, they are not. They pull the brains out. Really? Through the nose. Why do they do that? They put them in, like, little amphores. Um, that's something I could have probably gone without knowing. <laughs> they put all the organs in different amphores. <clears throat> and then some of them even uh, got buried with their um, staff. Like, once they died, they killed the staff and, like, stuck them down there. Oh, like, to serve them in the afterlife? Yeah. That'd be a terrible way to die. That would be. Like, oh, Pharaoh's... I knew, I knew this job was going to kill me. Yeah, Pharaoh's dead. Help. Well, here, I guess I'm going, too. Oh, well. There's something going on on the island tonight with all those... You see all those kids when we saw coming in the office? Yeah, I, I, I did, too. I'm, I, think this, I think it's something at the... Uh, at the opera, the opera house. What do they have in the opera house? I see people go to shows all the time, but is they it some, sometimes an opera? sometimes they have like the um, the Galveston uh, Galveston has like a dance company, and they do they do shows there. And I see all these dance studios down here around the Strand and downtown area. It's mostly it's mostly like uh, I think it's mostly like kid dancing and you know like the like the dance mm-hmm. team stuff or like interpretive. Ballerina dance. I haven't really looked into it. Yeah, or I checked saw, it out. Um, I see all those signs that have advertising. They get a lot of like m- musical acts. It seems like they go there. Yeah, and then you know what we need to do is I think let me check it out. But the Galveston Island Brewery is having their um, is having their third year anniversary for anniversary. If, if it's tomorrow, I'm correct in saying it's tomorrow, but... Dude, I, everyone is telling me to try that raspberry tiki wheat. I've had like four people in the past week tell me how amazing it was. It is tomorrow. It is their third anniversary. What are they doing? They're doing a huge... Um, they're doing a huge... Um, a huge party at the brewery. They have bands out there and stuff? Mm-hmm. Food trucks? I think they're, they're gonna, always doing something over there. I think they're going to have um, a bunch of uh, uh, 
cans, you know, cans for sale. They're gonna, they're. That's, I think that's what they were stocking up for. I saw a bunch of kegs out there, and what they're selling kegs. No, well, they always they sell them, but they sell the kegs and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that they're gonna do something pretty. I might have to make it pretty out epic. There. Yeah, I'm, I want to talk to um, the owner's name is Mark Delasso. I don't know how you feel about me dropping his name, but. Uh, he's a great guy. I met him met him many a time, and I'm gonna definitely try to get a hold of him so we can we can do like a walk through the brewery and and you know do a podcast so we can get some more listeners and that'd be kind of cool. So uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Call it a night. Uh, if you like this podcast, go ahead and like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, share us to your friends. And uh, Ben, you want to go ahead and sign us off? Folks, we appreciate you listening. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. And as always, stay salty.